So these are the trends um, that we have put together, that we have seen. And, and in doing so, we haven't left out other voices, but they were small, and therefore they didn't deserve or didn't call forth a, a large place. But there are, of course, those who are concerned about the, the traditional Latin Mass. And, um, but we are in unity with the Holy Father's intentions, and we are following his, uh, his request for us in the church, in, the, in, in our community. We have had conversations appropriately with uh, the, uh, uh, those who have same-sex attraction, and to be able to, uh, to hear their, both their, their sadness and their pain, and to find ways in which they can be included on their journey to be faithful to the Lord Jesus and faithful to the obligations of the church, the challenge of, the, of those who, who, who would like to be completely faithful to God and God's people. So we have visited them, and we will continue to have conversations about these matters with, uh, with the Church Universal and with the individuals who uh, require and seek out some attention and guidance. And so we, we look to be a church that is truly Catholic, that welcomes everyone. We want to be a, we see that the church is asking us to be a teacher paying attention to training and resources for faith formation of all ages. We're seeking to be a church that is a mother, concerned to meet, engage, um, can keep our young children in faith. A church that is a father, so that it in, indeed will experience the joy of what the word father means, which means author of life. That we would recognize God as our father, and with him author life in the church around us and this experience. And we were, wish to be a church of the apostles, that is a church that is sent, that is to meet and to evangelize the world around us. That's how we see the world going on. So what are we gonna do with all of this? I mean, what's the next steps for us to follow? Well, let me, let me uh, tell you my hopes, our hopes for the Archdiocese. The Archbishop has asked every department at the Pastoral Ministry Center to have a conversation among themselves, and that same conversation will be had by all the, the senior staff as well, but have a conversation among themselves about this report and the actions that may need, the priorities that may need to change inside of their, inside of their work for the church um, to assist the, and to help answer some of these uh, issues, help, to help address some of these issues, and to continue to celebrate that which the church recognizes as a beautiful gift that the leadership is. I, I pray that that same sort of conversation will happen with pastoral councils and finance councils and school councils throughout the Archdiocese of San Antonio. And that they look at the trends collectively and see not just whether they agree or not, but how can they attend you know, in, the, in the absorption of these trends, the understanding of the needs, what goals of the institution need to change then I pray that significant numbers of families will do the same thing inside of their home, that they will talk with their family about their children, about these trends, about, these, about what they can do to contribute to the growth of, uh, and the goodness of the church and the Archdiocese of San Antonio and ultimately, therefore, the church universal. For us in the Archdiocese of San Antonio, and, and then ultimately it will to a place where the Archbishop will, will address priorities and policies and uh, principles that will come forward to assist us as leaders in the church to describe the needs of the church. The idea of the church being synodal is constitutive. It will not change. The Holy Father has made that clear for us and our Archbishop is clearly on board with that idea. 
he, he embraces that idea, uh, as, as do the bishops. So the experience of the church uh, for us will be enhancing conversations uh, about all sorts of issues inside of the parish and, and inside of the archdiocese. Our most present one is, will be a conversation about the Eucharist, particularly the Sunday Mass. What do we believe about that? How do we remember our belief? How do we act upon that belief? What do the local communities and then the archdiocese need to do to both celebrate what is happening on Sundays in our parishes, of course the weekend, Saturday night as well, and enhance that, that gift that we have so that it is more clearly and more fully a witness to that incredibly real presence of Jesus Christ in our world, in our lives. Um, it is a very difficult thing for those of us who leave the church, lead the church, and who have dedicated ourselves to the church for years to hear the kind of numbers that suggest the number of people in our pews who do not believe that the Eucharist is indeed the very real presence, body, soul, blood, and divinity of Jesus the Christ. And so to, to remind ourselves of that, to reinvigorate ourselves of that, and to know that that's the principal reason we're there. And not to become community, but to receive Christ. Not just to feel good, but to meet the Christ, his story and his presence in our life, in our world. To be able to know that. And what do we need to do? So we've already started those conversations with the clergy of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, and we will continue to move in that direction uh, as we ask all the parishes to engage in this, in this conversation as well about the nature of the Eucharist. And so that will be uh, the next phase. And we're, do we're joining the bishops of the United States to have this conversation. We're doing it slightly differently than the bishops, the rest of the bishops are doing it, but we're gonna do it with vigor and intensity and goodness. And it will end, uh, right now there will be uh, groups in every deanery of the archdiocese that will, uh, assemblies that will address this issue uh, and, and in November of this year. And then um, next year, there will be a Eucharistic Congress in the Archdiocese of San Antonio. And the following year, there will be a National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, Indiana, in which we are anticipating 80, at least 80,000 people will gather to celebrate the reality of the Eucharist in our midst after we have all conversed about it, continue to allow the experience of the Eucharist to grow in our lives and to go forth with this message to the world about the saving presence of Jesus the Christ. I pray that you and your world will, will uh, continue to pay attention to these trends. I hope that you will experience the value of this synodal process and that you will seek to make it alive and continue in uh, your local community and in this archdiocese. Thank you very much for listening. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father and Son and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever and ever.